Hello everyone, welcome to Administrative Office Procedure and Management. So before we move on, please have with you your modules nang sa ganon may guide kayo sa magiging discussion natin in this video. So for your first week, kung makikita ninyo dyan sa inyong module, our topic is all about the introduction of Administrative Office, Office Procedures and Management. So in this um, video, we're going to discuss ano ba ang mga Administrative Office Procedures? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng Administrative Office Procedures? Ano naman ang ibig sabihin ng Administrative Office Management? So, dito natin i-discuss yun. Introduction nga, di ba? <laughs> Joke. Anyway, so let's proceed. First, what is administrative office procedures? So, administrative office or administrative procedures are a set of syst or system of rules that govern the procedures for managing an organization. Um, Saglit. Yan, sorry. So, administrative procedures, ulitin ko lang, are a set of or system of rules that govern the procedures for managing an organization. So, when you say administrative office procedures, ito yung mga proseso. Ito yung mga um, processes sa isang organization. Kung saan itong mga process na to tumutulong sa management or para mapabuti or mapaigi yung management ng isang business. For example, ano ba yung mga examples natin ng office procedures? Um, let's say, um, let's say, sa pag, uh, pag de-disseminate ng, ng information or ng memo. So, yung memo, or hindi, baliwan, baliwan tayo. Let's say, yung request. Ikaw, ikaw yung isa sa mga nasa clerk. Diba? For example, let's say we are in an office and this office um, is tawag dito parang ano siya, parang maliit lang naman. So, we have the clerk and then yung kumbaga head clerk and then from the head clerk meron kang um, medyo mas mataas na position hanggang sa ma-reach mo dun sa um, let's say manager. So, for example, you're a clerk and then may gusto kang i-request or let's say magpa-file ka ng leave magpa-file ka ng leave. So, ikaw na clerk, diretso ba na kay manager ka magpa-file ng leave or mag-aas ng permission ng, ng leave? Hindi. May proseso yan. So, dito pumapasok yung sinasabi natin administrative office procedures. There's a process kung saan, syempre, ikaw na clerk, dun ka kay head clerk muna pumunta. So, dalhin mo muna yung request mo kay head clerk. Kapag ka ino or pagka um, in-approve ni head clerk, tsaka ka lang ulit pupunta sa susunod na hierarchy. Kasi nga, di ba, may hierarchy ang office. So, ayun yung procedures na tinatawag. Yung mga bagay, hindi lang naman, oh, for example, hindi lang naman dito sa, um, hindi lang naman, jury, uh, tulad ng binigay ko na example, yung examples natin, marami pang iba. For example, when you say office procedures, ito rin yung mga rules. Yung mga rules and regulations na kailangang sundin ng ng mga empleyado, ng mga managers din, ganyan. So, uh, when you say procedure, any process, any process na nangyayari inside nung office that helps uh, in managing or administering yung business. Okay, so yun yung tinatawag natin na administrative office procedures. So, they are procedures or set of systems or rules that govern the procedures for managing an organization. So, naintindihan naman ninyo siguro, no? So, when you say procedure, yun yung mga proseso na ginagawa. For example, ng, um, for example another example is, uh, sinasabi na, uh, when they say that, you are not allowed to open Facebook during working hours. Diba? O, sig sabihin natin na nasa ano ka, nasa anong industry. Let's say, uh, tahian isa ka dun sa mga mananahe, you are not allowed to open Facebook. Or, sige, wag wag mananahe kasi medyo, ano, let's say, nasa office ka. O, sige, let's say, SIAC. You're in SIAC. And, syempre, alam natin that um, open ang wifi sa SIAC para sa mga empleyado. Kasi nga, ginagamit namin ito to, to make, um, to make our lessons, ganyan, sa mga research and everything. So, open yung internet. Pero, you are not allowed to open Facebook or YouTube, not unless it is related to your job. So, bakit ganun? Bakit, bakit hindi pwedeng i-open yung Facebook? Kasi nga po, binabayaran ka ng school 
for you to do your job during your working hours. So, kumbaga, dapat yung, yung, yung kumbaga, whole focus mo, yung, yung whole energy mo, is ginagamit mo or ini-utilize mo yung oras mo nang sa ganun magawa mo yung trabaho mo. Without, um, yung, yun nga, yung pag-open mo ng Facebook is a personal matter, right? So, dapat, hindi, walang personal things involved during your working hours. So, yun, isa yun sa mga um, pwede maari nating sabihing office procedures. And what happens, hindi lang kasi doon nag stop What happens kung nahuli ka na gumagamit ng Facebook? So, yun, doon na pumapasok yung process. So, first, doon sa process natin, you are not allowed to use Facebook during working hours. And then, what happens when you are caught using Facebook in working during working hours what punishments are are to be given to you or ano yung mga proseso ano yung mga procedures na pwedeng uh, i-undergo mo or, yung yung ganun so it's a process yung process yun di ba proseso yun na nagkamali ka so alam mo na uh, na may kapa, may kaparusahan dun sa ginawa mong um, paglabag sa batas ng ng ano so that's the process yun yung sinasabi natin na process so that's administrative office procedure <laughs> naintindihan pa ninyo okay so anyway kung may mga question naman kayo feel free to ask me via messenger pero uh, i think malinaw naman di ba or ako lang yung nagsasabi anyway yun nga yung sabi ko if you have any question please feel free to ask via messenger i-message nyo lang ako and I will answer uh, to the best I can as soon as I can so next why are administrative office procedures important so first it is to establish efficiency two consistency three responsibility and four accountability <coughs> excuse me so, let's say, um, ano yung importance ng uh, office procedure? First, to establish efficiency. When you say efficiency, okay. So, let's take, for example, yung sinabi ko kanina that you are not allowed to open your Facebook accounts or your Facebook during working hours. Bakit kasi? Siyempre, kapag ka binuksan mo yung, uh, uh, yung Facebook mo, admit it or not, you're going to spend more and more time browsing kung ano nang nangyayari sa Facebook, right? Hindi mo namamalayan, hala, naka 30 sec, eh, 30 minutes ka na, 1 hour ka na na nasa harap ng Facebook. Admit it or not, that's the reality. Na once na nag-start ka na, na mag-browse ng Facebook, there are certain things there that interest you and it's never ending. Kasi nga, di ba, maraming ano doon, maraming stories, maraming, especially kapag ka you're a social, ano, social active ka na tao and you want to like everything that you like and dislike or thumbs up or thumbs down yung mga hindi mo gusto, di ba? So, kinakain nun yung oras mo. So, nagiging efficient ka ba? Hindi, right? So, when you establish that or, or nasa um, office procedures ninyo na hindi mo pwedeng buksan ang Facebook mo, so you're going to concentrate only on your work. So, nagiging efficient ka. Kasi nga, walang distractions na nagdi-distract sa'yo. <laughs> walang distractions sa trabaho mo. Kasi hindi mo nga binuksan yung Facebook mo, which is a distraction. So, nagiging efficient ka sa kung ano yung ginagawa mo. So, next, we have consistency. Ano yung consistency? Um, for example, doon ulit sa paggamit ng Facebook. So, nag-Facebook ka. And then, nahuli ka. Tapos, ito yung binigay or ipinataw sa'yo na kaparusahan. Kasi nga, yun yung proseso. That's the procedure. Now, here comes your other co co-worker. Let's say na hindi kasi, um, hindi established yung procedure ninyo. Hin walang naka-indicate doon. Basta ang sinabi lang doon, eh, ang sinabi lang doon, eh, bawal magbukas ng Facebook account during working hours and walang nakalagay doon kung ano yung magiging consequence walang nakalagay doon walang specific details doon kung ano yung mangyayari sa iyo ano yung mga kaparusahan na na ma, uh, ibibigay sa iyo if ever na mahuli ka walang ganon so ikaw itong naunang nahuli and this is your punishment now itong si second naman na coworker mo nahuli din Pero let's say favorite kasi siya ni manager. So since walang walang ano, walang walang given na procedure kung ano yung susunod kapag ka na nahuli ka, walang nakalagay doon kung ano yung mga 
kaparusahan na dapat na may pataw dun sa nahuli na nag-Facebook, syempre, magiging mas light yung ano nung isa. So, magkakaroon na ngayon ng conflict. Bakit si ganito, ganun lang yung naging decision sa kanya, eh, ako natanggal ako sa trabaho. Diba? There's no consistency. Kaya pumapasok ang office procedures. Nang sa ganun, magkaroon sila ng consistency. Kapag ka nahuli ka na nagumagamit ng Facebook, makakaltasan ang sahod mo ng 10%. O, oh, ba diba? uh, Yun yung naging, it's just an example, yun yung naging patakaran. Ngayon, kapag kahit ikaw or yung anak ng ng boss or ng anak ng manager or yung friend ni manager yung or yung friend ni president ang ang nahuli na na, na, na gumagamit ng Facebook during working hours consistent na ito yung magiging kaparusahan niya or this will be uh, the consequence of his or her action kasi nga it is written nandun, nasa office procedures ninyo, na kapag ka nahuli ka na gumagamit ng Facebook, ito yung magiging kaparusahan mo. So, there's consistency. Consistent na yun yung magiging um, parusa nga nung kung sino man ang mahuhuli na gumagamit ng Facebook. So, nakukuha ninyo, first, we have the efficiency. You establish efficiency by um, knowing what are what are um, good and not good <laughs> hindi naman kung ano yung dapat at hindi mo dapat gawin so you establish efficiency now you establish consistency kasi nga magiging consistent ka or magiging consistent yung mga proseso dun sa inyo kasi nga meron nang nakal nakasulat or given na yung mga procedures so consistent Next, responsibility. So, ano naman tong responsibility? Siyempre, nagiging responsible ka sa mga actions mo. Kasi nga, meron na tayong tinatawag na office procedures. So, ngayon, as an employee, it's your responsibility to follow these procedures. So, um, na, kumbaga, nadidevelop yung sense of responsibility mo as an employee and as an employer also to follow yung tinatawag natin ng mga office procedures. Next is accountability. So, ano naman itong accountability? Yung accountable ka kung may, may kung baga may nagawa kang mali, um, sa'yo yun. Sa yung consequence, ikaw yung mag-handle. Ikaw yung kung baga, aako nung consequences kasi nga, ikaw yung accountable. Let's say for example, ganito. Sa office procedures ninyo, nakalhat doon na when you're going to borrow something, you have to write it down doon sa borrower's book or borrower's log ninyo. For example, um, gagamit ka ng printer. Kailangan mo ng printer or let's say um, projector. Kailangan mo ng projector. So, ngayon, hihiramin mo doon sa person in charge ng projector. Bago ibigay sa'yo yung projector, you are... Um, tawag dito na nasabi sa iyo na ang procedures ninyo you have to jot it down or isulat mo kung ano yung pangalan mo, ano yung kinuha mo, kailan mo kinuha at kailan mo ibabalik. Okay? So, um, ngayon nasira mo. Nasira mo yung yung projector. Ang mangyayari niyan, uh, pag binalik mo, syempre i-check mo na kung is it working or something. Um, and then makikita doon kasi na pangalan mo ikaw yung huling kumamit. 'Di ba? Ikaw yung huling kumamit. So, let's say hindi nila chinek pero nung may humiram ulit, hindi na siya nagfo-function. So, ngayon, sasabihin nitong um, sumunod na humiram doon sa person na uh, nagpapahiram nga nung or kung yung in charge doon sa Uh, tawag dito, in charge dun sa projector, na hindi naman na gumagana, gumagana yung yung um, projector. So, anong mangyayari? I-check nila kung sino yung last na humiram. And of course, ayan, papasok yung investigation. Now, you're going to be held accountable dun sa nasira mong projector. So, alam niyo yung um, I'm trying to show here that yung accountability nandun when there is an office procedure. Kung may uh, written up office procedure or yeah, may, may ano, nakikita kung sino yung accountable or nakikita yung accountability mo dun sa mga actions mo. Na lahat ng ginagawa mo, accountable ka. Kung may ginawa kang hindi maganda, accountable ka. Tulad nung sinabi ko kanina na nahuli ka na gumagamit ng Facebook, accountable ka 
dun sa punishment kasi nga ikaw yung nahuli na um kung ba, ikaw yung nahuli na gumagamit ng Facebook. So, accountable ka dun sa action mo. Alam ba ninyo kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng accountable? Kung baga, um, you accept your mistakes, something like that, or or yung, kung baga, yung punishments mo, hindi mo tinatakbuhan. Hindi mo matatakbuhan. Kasi nga, you have to own it. Naako mo yun. That's accountability. Kasi nga, alam mo na ikaw yung may mali. Alam mo yung mga office procedures ninyo. Alam mo yung mga responsibilities mo as an employee. And now, you're accountable dun sa mga actions mo. Since alam mo kung ano yung mga hindi dapat, huwag mo nang gawin. Kapag ka ginawa mo, alam mo kung ano yung magiging resulta. Alam mo kung ano yung magiging punishment. So, that's what accountability is. Um, and... Kanina ko pa to sinasabi yung office procedures. Kapag ka kasi, bakit ba natin pinag-uusapan kasi ang office procedures, di ba? Um, so, we are in office administration. Yung course po natin is Bachelor of Science in Office Administration. Saan ba patutungo ang mga office administration graduates? So, we are learning. We. Here in um, office uh, administration, you are being molded molded to be future managers to be future office girls office boys okay so dito dito sa ano na to dito sa office procedures we're giving you a glimpse of of what uh what the real office or what yeah the real office uh ano yung nangyayari sa office okay so dito sa dito sa office procedures, pinapakita namin yung ano yung, kung ano yung mga pwedeng mangyari sa office. Sa real office na. Okay? Kasi nga, we are, um, minamold kayo dito or tinuturuan kayo dito how to become, um, yan, sinabi ko kanina, office girl, office boys, managers. So, you have to learn kung ano ba yung importance ng administrative office procedures. Or ano ba ang administrative office procedures. Okay? So, Ayan, katulad ng sinasabi natin, why is it important? First, it establish efficiency. Next, consistency, responsibility, and accountability. And ang mga administrative office procedures na ito, kapag ka kayo na-employ, i-explain lahat yan. Bago kayo mag-start ng trabaho, dapat yan ina-explain lahat. Ano yung mga dapat at hindi dapat ninyong gawin during office hours? Yun, sinasabi lahat yan Kung ano yung damit, ano yung appropriate attire Ano yung oras ng pagpasok, ano yung oras ng break Ilang oras ang break or ilang oras ang lunch break Ilang oras ang coffee break, kailan kayo dapat umuwi Ganyan, handling of, handling of files, sinasabi rin yan um, Handling of, uh, tawag dito, mga gamit Sinasabi lahat yan, okay? Dapat before starting yung job na na inaplayan niyo or na na employ kayo, dapat ina-explain lahat yan. Nang sa ganon, um, alam niyo yung mga responsibilities niyo and alam niyo kung kailan kayo accountable sa isang pagkakamali or accountable sa isang bagay or accountable sa isang situation. Okay, so. Ayun, yun yung uh, why is it important. Another thing is it provide an objective set of rules by which an organization is governed. So, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na ito yung mga set of rules din. For example kasi, let's say, um, uh, sa sabihin natin yung example natin kanina about the projector. Ngayon, walang rules kung paano, kung, kela, eh, kung walang proseso ang paghiram ng projector. All you need to do is to go there and get that projector and use it and then return it. Or you might not um, be responsible enough to return it kasi walang monitoring. Hindi natin matatanggal yun na, na other people are really irresponsible sometimes. So, um, let's say ganun ang nangyari. Walang, walang proseso. Hindi ka naglilista ng pangalan. And then, let's say, Um, nahi, nasira nga itong projector. Sino yung magbabayad ng projector? Or sino yung magiging accountable sa pagkakasira ng projector? Walang ano, walang um, walang may tuturo na accountable kasi wala ka namang record. Hindi mo naman alam kung sino yung huling gumamit or kung sino yung mga gumamit, di ba? So, 
there's chaos if there's no rules. There's chaos if there's no um, set of rules that's that that's governing an organization. So, uh, mauubos yung mga gamit ninyo kasi nga wala kayong rules and regulations. For example, again, sa, um, ang tawag doon, doon sa auditing, hindi naman siya auditing, um, parang yung pagbibilang ng mga gamit, Anong term doon? May, may, yung pagbibilang ng mga gamit, for example, yung ball pen, ganyan. Kung walang ganun, let's say, hindi kayo nag-audit, wala kayong, um, ano pa yung tamang term doon? Di ba kasi sa, ano, may, may mga, um, may mga offices kasi, for example, na binibilang kung ilan yung, binibilang kung ilang boxes ng coupon band, kung ilang boxes or kung ilang ink ang available. Bakit nila ginagawa yun? Hindi naman yun sa nang sa ganun uh, makita kung ano. Pero it's more on for them to be able to be efficient. Continuous yung trabaho. Kasi for example, kailangan nila all the time yung, for example, let's say SIA. Kailangan namin ng, ng coupon bands kasi nga nag-ano kami nag ay inventory yung tawag okay so for example walang inventory na nangyayari di syempre kailangan namin all the time yung um, bond paper kasi nga nagpre-print kami ng modules ngayon walang inventory hindi nililista kung ilan ang ilan ang coupon bands hindi nililista kung um, ilan ang inks na available ang nangyayari lang basta kuha lang ng kuha ng kuha ng kuha ngayon nawalan na ng coupon band eh nag lockdown ngayon, wala nang pagkukunan ng coupon ban. O di, anong mangyayari? So, hindi na nagiging efficient yung school. Hindi na kami makakapag-print ng mga modules kasi nga, wala na kaming coupon ban. So, doon pumapasok yung tinatawag natin administrative office procedure. And yung sinabi ko kanina na inventory, that's one part of yung administrative office procedures. Isang part yun. Yung, gumagawa ka ng inventaryo kung saan nililista mo kung ilan na yung available. Ilan na lang yung available na na coupon bands or na mga na mga uh, gamit dun sa office. Kinakailangan yon Para nang sa ganun, kung nakita mong konti na lang, mag-order ka na. Um, mag-order ka na in advance. Para nang sa ganun, continuous yung ano, hindi kayo maubusan and continuous yung service na ginagawa ninyo or yung trabaho ninyo, continuous. Hindi siya may stop due to um, walang gamit. Okay? So, ayan. Next, we have it helps establish the legitimacy of management action by ensuring the application of management rules and decisions is done in an objective, fair, and consistent manner. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina about yung sa pagkahuli ng gumagamit ng Facebook. Since merong procedure, kahit sino pa yan, sino pa yung nahuli na yan, um, magiging fair and objective ang magiging decision kasi magiging pare-parehas yan kasi nakasulat dun eh na kapag ka nahuli ka na gumagamit ng Facebook magiging 10% ang kaltas mo sa sahod for this month so kahit sino pa yan maging sino ka man <laughs> sino pa yung nahuli na gumagamit ng Facebook magiging patas yung decision yung rules kasi nga nandun it's dictated there it's written there that this is going to be your 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 punishment so the legitimacy of management action hindi um, nandun hindi pwedeng i-question for example let's say si president or or yung may-ari ng let's say si manager yung may-ari ng si manager um, friend niya itong nahuli ngayon, yung manager na isa, uh, kumbaga, itong si manager na friend, pupunta kay manager B, sasabihin, bakit ganito? Kinaltasan daw ninyo ng sahod yung ano. So, kinaltasan daw ninyo ng sahod yung friend ko, sabi ni manager na friend kay manager B. Dito sasabihin ni manager B, it's written in the rules na ganito ang magiging um, punishment ng kung sino man ang mahuhuli na nagkagamit or gumagamit ng Facebook. So, magiging legitimate. Meron kang backup as a manager dun sa magiging um, action or yun, yung magiging action mo or yung magiging decision mo or punishment na ibibigay mo dun sa mga hindi nag, um, sumusunod sa mga rules and regulations ng procedures ng iyong company or ng office na kinabibilangan mo. So, ayun. And consistent manner. So, magiging consistent. Since it's written na nga, parehas yan. Pare-parehas yan. Hindi na yan magbabago kasi it's written. Not unless there's going to be an amendment. Pero usually, um, hindi, hindi ganun ka, ano yan. Hindi masyadong ina-amend ang 
malimit kung i-amend ang mga um, rules when it comes to office procedures. Next, we have it helps ensure that managers are held accountable for decisions that deviate from the procedures. So, since it's written, diba, nandito na nga yung procedure, it's given. So, um, yung mga managers, they are held accountable. So, magiging accountable sila or magiging responsible sila kung merong mga decisions man na 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 um, deviate hindi hindi um, hindi ayon dun sa procedures so for example ayan yung sinasabi natin inuulit ko na lang no for example yung sinasabi natin kanina na um, na tawag dito na nahuli so for let's say ikaw nahuli ka na nag Meron ng procedures na yun nga. Meron ng nakasulat na when you are caught using Facebook during office hours, 10% of your salary will be deducted for the month. Now, ikaw, nangyari sa'yo yun, nahuli ka, so you were deducted 10%. Ngayon, itong co-worker mo, nahuli din, but since he's a friend of ni manager, hindi kinaltasan ni manager, binigyan lang siya ng warning. So, ikaw as an employee and ikaw bilang alam mo kung ano yung mga procedures doon sa office ninyo, you have the right to um, hold your your manager accountable doon sa action niya. Kasi nga, di ba, um, nakalagay naman doon sa procedures ninyo na dapat 10% ang kaltas. Wala namang nakalagay doon na, na first warning, second warning, wala naman. Kaltas agad naman ang nakalagay. So, um, dahil na present na nga doon yung procedures, pwede mong kumbaga singilin yung manager mo na o oh, bakit ganito ang ginawa mo eh ganito naman ang rules okay so ayan so next what are the benefits of using office procedures so first it create a uniform way of doing things that create consistency efficiency and professionalism within the office environment so yun tulad ng ano kanina ano yung benefit kakaroon sila ng consistency ng efficiency ng professionalism Next, um, following that office procedure would be mandatory. Uh, what are the effects of using office procedure? First, following that office procedure would be mandatory and disobeying it could cost staff members their job. So, ano yung effects? Ano yung effect or ano yung magiging epekto ng office procedure? So, di ba ikaw as an employee, before ka pa na-employ or before ka pa nag-start ng trabaho, na ibigay na sa'yo yung mga office procedures. Ano yung mga rules and regulations na kailangan mong sundan within the office. So, nibigay na yon. It's mandatory for all of you as employees to follow the rules. To follow the rules and the procedures within the organization. Mandatory yon. And disobeying, it could cost staff members their jobs. So, knowing this, knowing the consequences of not following the procedure in in the office syempre magiging um kumbaga magiging responsible yung mga employee mo yung mga employees magiging responsible in following yung procedure kasi nga alam nila na maaari silang matanggal sa trabaho kapag ka hindi nila sinunod yung procedure Next, what are the example of pro office procedures? So, ito yon. No personal phone calls. No personal phone calls. Checking voicemails in the morning. No unnecessary conversations with clients. No accepting of gifts. Also include the handling of office equipment such as reloading empty copy machines and refilling staplers. So, hindi lang doon sa mga rules and regulations na ano ang saklaw ng office procedure. It also includes kung kailan, kailan dapat i-refill ang photocopy machines or sino ang naka-in-charge na mag-refill ng photocopy machine or nung stapler. So, as, as simple as those, lahat yon nakalaad or nakalahad or written sa mga office procedures ng isang kumpanya. Especially if this company is yung mga malalaki, lahat talaga it should be detailed. Next, what is administrative office management? So, we are done with administrative office procedures. So, inuulit ko, ano yung office procedures? These are the procedures or process that governs an organization. 
Okay, so yun yung mga procedures. Ano yung mga proseso na ginagawa doon? Ano yung mga dapat at hindi dapat gawin during working hours that's included dun sa ating tinatawag na procedures? Now, let's move on to what we call the admin administrative office management. Ano naman ang management? So, Administrative office management is a profession involving the design, implementation, evaluation, and maintenance of the process of work within an office or organization in order to maintain and improve efficiency and productivity. So when you say management, ito naman yung career o ito naman yung trabaho kung saan itong trabaho na to ay nag implement nag -e evaluate and nag -e maintain ng mga process within an organization. Diba? For example, uh, and yun, yun, dun, dun din pumapasok yung sinasabi natin na um, manager. So, it practices different virtues and accomplishments of different chores and works in the office within a given time. So, ito yun, hierarchical, hierarchical, hikal, hierarchical, hierarchical structure of administrative office management. So, this is just an example. Hindi naman lahat ng office administration or administrative office management, e eh, ganito yung, yung structure. So, example natin lang ito. President, we have the vice presidents, and then we have the managers. Okay, so, yan yung, ano natin, yung hierarchy. So, what are the difference between today's uh, administrative office management from the past? First, in enterprise, enterprise, Wide system allow organization to integrate a diverse array of functions which can provide a powerful tool for managerial decision making and control. So in an enterprise, um, wide system, when you say system, computerized. Computerized na lahat. Right? Computerized na lahat ngayon. Since computerized na lahat, nagiging mas madali na yung trabaho. Ganon. Unlike dati, syempre medyo mahirap magtrabaho dati kasi nga walang computer. Um, lahat manual, mano-mano yung paggawa mo, lahat ng, ng mga bagay-bagay sa trabaho, lahat manual. Um, aning isa dito? Sabi, decision making and control. Marami tayong mga system ngayon um, na kung saan nagme-measure siya ng risk. Yung mga risk management na tinatawag nila sa mga um, companies, kumbaga systemized na siya, computer na ang nag, um, kumbaga, nag may measure nung risk. Kung, um, kung mataas masyado yung risk, so syempre, itong si, si manager magda-decide na wag nang ituloy. Kung medyo mababa naman yung risk, according to the system, according to the software na ginagamit nila, with all the information na nandun, kung mababa yung lalabas na risk or yung na-measure na risk ng system, di ipopursue ni manager. So, nagiging helpful ang mga systems. When you say systems, these are applications or computer softwares na ginagamit nila to um, to minimize yung trabaho ng isang um, manager. So, yun nga yung sinasabi ko na isang example is yung ating risk uh, measuring system. Minimeasure niya kung yung project ba na yun is masyadong mataas ang risk, then um, out. Hindi na itutuloy. Pero kapag ka medyo mababa yung risk, then ipuperso. Next, letter B, enterprise resource planning is company-wide computer software based system used to manage and coordinate all resources, information, and function of the business from shared data stores. So, when you say enterprise resource planning, ito naman ay isang software kung saan Ayan, it manage and coordinates all resources. So, yung computer na mismo ang nagmamanage ng resources, information, and function ng business um, business from shared data store. So, when you say, for example, isa kang malaking company, and then, yung mga resources mo, nandun lahat sa, yung inventory mo nasa isang nasa iisang software. So, ngayon, example lang ito, ha. pinapakita ko lang example. Let's say, um, hindi. Let's go to um, Naoy. Sige, sa Naoy store. Let's say Naoy store is using, uh, or say Baile. Baile is using uh, 
um, computer system, di ba? Yung dun sa pag, uh, ano nila, pagbebenta nila, di ba? May system sila dun, dun sa cashier. Okay, so dun sa cashier na yon lahat ng orders or ng deliveries, lahat ng dumadating na deliveries, ini-enter kasi doon. So, for example, may 10 boxes tayo dito ngayon ng surf, may 10 boxes ng 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 um, pride, may 10 boxes ng tide. Okay? So, ang nangyari, nagbenta sila, kinaumagahan. And then, unti-unting nauubos yung nauubos yung let's say yung um, maraming bumibili ng sabon. Let's say, yung tide. Maraming bumibili ng tide. So, ngayon, uh, malapit na maubos. Let's say, naka-program doon sa system nila na kung meron na lang silang tatatlong uh, or dadalawang box ng, ng surf, eh magkakaroon ng notification doon. So, you only have two boxes of surf, churva, churva. So, syempre, ang first na papasok doon, kailangan mong mag-order ulit. Ngayon, aside from that, nakita mo using that software na mas mabilis na mabili ang surf. So, the next time that you're going to order yung mga sabon, syempre as a manager, um, dadagdagan mo na, magkakaroon ka na ng decision na dadagdagan as instead of 10 boxes ng, ng surf, gagawin mo siyang 20 boxes. And since itong pride hindi masyadong nabibili, instead of buying 10 boxes, you're going to buy 8 boxes. So, nakita ninyo yung gamit ng software. Instead na instead na mano-mano mong titignan, using a software makes um, makes uh, managing a uh, business um, tawag dito, mas madali, easier. Easier and a lot, a lot easier and also more efficient. So, yun yung difference ng, ng dinatawag natin na administrative office management noon and ngayon. Kasi nga dati, di ba, manual lahat. So, for example, dito sa sinasabi ko nga dun sa um, baile, kung wala pa silang system, syempre mano-mano nilang iti-check kung meron pa bang nabentang, meron pa bang mabibentang mga sabon. Iti-check nila and sometimes hindi kaya lahat yun ng, ng iilang empleyado. So, you have to have more employees kung saan isa ang taga-check ng sabon, isa ang taga-check ng ng diapers, isa ang taga-check ng condiments o di ba? So ang dami-dami mo nang kailangang bayaran. Unlike ngayon na during this um, era or during this time na kung saan um, ano na tayo, tawag dito, medyo advanced na tayo. Um, nagiging mas madali na lang yung yung um, pag-manage nga ng isang business. So, sabi pa dito sa inyong module, uh, the new trend in today's business is to increase productivity while decreasing cost. So many companies are reducing their staffs. One worker now does the work of many as middle management is shrinking. With a continuous change in technology, employees are required to gain new skills to keep abreast of the changes. So, um, Yun nga, katulad ng sinasabi ko, na we are now in um, a technological era or computer era kung saan yung trabaho dati ng isa nag ng, ng sampo nagagawa na ng computer na mag-isa. And ang kailangan mo na lang is isang operator. So ngayon, hindi na kailangan ng pagkadami-daming empleyado. Hindi na nila kailangan ng pagkadami-daming empleyado kasi nga, kayang gawin ng computer na mag-isa at ng kanyang operator yung trabaho ng maraming empleyado dati. So ngayon, nag-shrink na yung <coughs> yung mga staff sa middle management. Kumbaga, hindi na kailangan ng ganong karaming staff. So for example, yun nga yung sinasabi ko kanina dito sa Baile. Um, though Baile is not a big company, pero ayun, um, pwede natin siyang i-consider na ano kasi gumagamit na siya ng gumagamit na siya ng system. So, di ba? Sa ano kasi, comparing to others na na ayun, na hindi pa nakasystem, may hirapan talaga sila sa pag-inventory pa lang. Doon sa pag-inventory pa lang. So, isa yung tagalista, o oh, ba isa yung tagalista kung ilan yung dumating, and then pagkatapos na maglista, um, syempre ngayon, dumating. Tapos bukas, magbebenta ka. So, after yung mo nakabenta, mamayang hapon, maglilista ulit ilan yung nabili, ilan na lang yung naiwan, ilan na lang yung natira, ano yung kailangang bilhin ulit kasi naubos na. So, minamano-mano yan. Dahil nga sa minamano-mano yan, in each product, since matrabaho, in each, uh, let's say, hindi product, in each um, category, may mga 
tao ka na imaman or may mga tao na kailangan mong i-hire para gumawa nung trabaho na yon. So, let's say, for example, sabon. So, iba yung tao na tagalista, taga-inventaryo at taga-check ng mga sabon. Iba rin yung taga-inventaryo ng mga um, diapers. Kasi, di ba, ang dami-daming uri ng diapers. So, syempre, marami kang magiging empleyado. Marami kang magiging empleyado. Marami kang babayaran. Pero since ngayon, yung sinasabi ko nga na kaya na ng computer na gawin yun, nalalesen na yung empleyado na kinakailangang i-hire. So, for example, tulad nga nung sinasabi ko kay Baile, meron na silang computer. Ano na lang yung ginagawa nila? Pag dumating yung orders, nililista lahat nila kung ano yung dumating na orders. And then, kinaumagahan, sige, benta, 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 benta. And then, yung system nila, nakaprogram, nakapag ganito na lang yung natirang, um, kapag ganito na lang yung natirang, tawag dito, um, product na ganito, kailangan mag-notify na. So, mag-notify na yung system. Magsasabihin na ng system na, oh, ito na lang yung natira, kailangan na ninyong bumili ulit. Ano yung nangyayari? Kasi nga, it's computerized. Kapag ka may bumili, di ba, let's say, o oh, nilista mo na lahat yung sa ano, sa, sa computer, in-enter mo na lahat na ito yung lahat ng dumating. Ngayon, kinaumagahan or kinabukasan, may bumili. Diretso na na nakakaltas yung amount nung binibili nila or yung number ng binibili ng mga tao dun sa naisave mo na inventaryo sa inventory at naikakaltas na yon so yung yung computer na din ang nagkakaltas nagche-check kung ilan na yung nabenta yung computer na din yung nagche-check kung meron pa bang naiwan meron pa bang natitira may kasya pa ba na ibenta for the next day and so kung wala yung computer na rin ang magsasabi dun sa operator na oh kailangan mo nang bumili so you see the computer can do a lot of jobs na nag-iisa yung computer tsaka yung operator pero kaya niyang gawin yung trabaho ng marami so that's the difference of yung tinatawag natin na office uh, management or administrative office management ngayon compared to yung office uh, management dati kung saan manual lahat. So next, what are the most significant trusts in AOM or administrative office management? First, information management. It entails organizing, retrieving, acquiring, and maintaining information closely related to management. So yun yung tinatawag nilang information management. When you say information management, for example... Dito sa school, ano yung mga information dito? Um, let's say yung sa registrar's office, yung inyong mga, yung inyong mga, um, ang tawag dito? Yung inyong mga credentials. So let's say yung credentials ninyo. Kumuha kayo ng credentials ninyo from, di ba, first years kasi. So from, from your school, nung high school, or nung senior high, and then pinunta ninyo dito sa um, SIAC. So, kapag ka kailangan mo ulit ng, so let's say, graduate ka na, or let's say, gusto mong lumipat ng school nang hindi pa natatapos ang semester, pwede mo bang kunin yung ano yung, kung ano yung mga binigay mo na information doon sa, sa registrar? Hindi, kasi that's already considered as a property ng school. Pwede bang basta-basta na lang ibigay ng school yung mga information na yon or yung mga papers mo na binigay mo? Kailangan, pwede bang kahit na sino yung pumunta dito, maari ba nilang ibigay doon sa kung sino man ang mag-ask? Of course not, di ba? Hindi, let's say, um, let's say, ano, may pumunta dito tapos gustong kunin yung grades ninyo. Eh, wala naman kayong... Uh, di ba, ibibigay ba nung school dun sa, or ibibigay ba ni Sir Registrar yung inyong grades ko sa kung sino mang tao ang dumating? Hindi. Ano yung kailangan? Usually, kapag ka hindi ikaw yung pumunta, kinakailangan ng authorization letter mo and your photocopy of your ID with your signature affixed in the letter. Nung iyong, ano, yun yung kailangan kailangan doon. And also, you have or yung, yung inyo, yung pumunta na kukuha ng grade ninyo, kailangan nila ng magpakita rin ng ID to validate na sila yung tao na nandun sa letter. So, that's information management. Paano mo i-manage yung information na na hinahawakan o pinanghahawakan ng ng iyong company? Okay, for example, employees naman, let's say, sa mga empleyado, uh, may information ang mga empleyado sa'yo. Kung meron bang pumunta sa'yo and 
tinanong kung pwede bang kunin nila yung number ni ni Cordapia, ibibigay mo ba? Is that how you manage the information? Of course not. Hindi mo pwedeng basta-basta na lang ibigay yung information dun sa mga taong humihingi na hindi naman hindi naman nabigyan ng authority. So yun yung yung inakukuha ba ninyo kung anong ibig sabihin ng information management? It's how you manage the information. Um, yung pagbibigay, pagkuha, ayan or pagbigay mo, retrieving, acquiring, retrieving, pagkuha, acquiring, pagkuha din and maintaining information closely related to management. Okay, so next, knowledge management. What is knowledge management? It involves managing the organization's intellectual capital, human resources and strategic management. Comprises rank of practice used in organization to identify, create, represent, distribute and adoption of insights and experiences. Components of um, knowledge management are people, process, technology, and structure. So, ano naman itong tinatawag nilang um, knowledge management? So, ito naman is how you manage the intellectual capital or yung intellectual rights and human resources or your employees. Paano mo minamanage ang mga employees mo? Paano mo minamanage ang mga strategies na ginagamit ninyo? So, we are talking here about managers ha, kasi nga AOM ito. So, um, ikaw as a manager, kung ikaw magiging manager, you have to have this what we call information management. Dapat nasa iyo yan kasi nga ikaw yung manager. As a manager, hindi mo pwedeng basta-basta na lang ibigay yung mga informations na, na kinukuha ng mga kung sino-sino. Right? There should be a management. Dapat... Um, Ano yung nilalagay nila? Dapat uh, confidential. Yung mga confidential, you have, dapat you have to maintain as confidential. Hindi mo pwedeng basta-basta na lang ibigay sa iba. That's information management. Learn how to manage the informations that you keep. Kung sino lang yung pwede mong pagbigyan, sila lang. Hindi mo pwedeng ibigay na lang ng ibigay. <laughs> okay? So, information management. Now, next, we have knowledge management. Ano naman yung ibig sabihin ng knowledge management? Paano mo i-manage as a manager yung intellectual rights ng iyong mga empleyado? When you say intellectual rights, um, aware ba kayo sa intellectual rights? Ito yung rights mo. For example, nagsulat ka ng libro. Hindi pwedeng kopyahin ng ibang tao yung libro mo kasi nga sinulat mo yon. That's your original piece. That's your intellectual rights. Sa'yo yon. Galing mo yon, talino mo yon, yun yung ginamit mo. So you have your intellectual rights. Same is true as a manager. Um, may mga instances kasi na uh, since ikaw yung manager and siya empleyado mo lang, pero siya yung may idea, ngayon na-publish yung idea niya, ang nakukuha or ang nailalagay dun sa na-publish na idea is ikaw as a manager. So that's not that's not uh, how you do knowledge management. Dapat um Ang tawag, kinikilala mo pa rin. Kilalanin mo pa rin yung mga sources mo. Yung mga tumulong sa'yo. Or you have, why not just say na, oh, hindi pala sa akin, hindi sa akin nang galing yan. Kay, kay employee nang galing yan. So, di ba? Knowledge management. Next, um, uh, yung process. So, you have to have the knowledge also kung paano i-manage yung process. Yung proseso. May mga, ano kasi, usually may mga, um, may ma especially yung mga bagong companies yung mga bagong companies merong mga instances na hindi pa kasi um, formulated yung process nila yung mga proseso nila yung mga procedures nila hindi pa well designed kumbaga nasa trial and error pa sila so you as a manager it is your job to um, yun to solidify yung process na ginagawa within within the company. So, since ikaw yung manager, ikaw yung nakatoka na gumawa ng proseso, na mag-design ng proseso. Though, hindi naman ikaw lang, siguro may help ka din, pero the last say is from you. Kasi since you are the manager, ikaw yung magmamanage. Next, technology. Ano naman tong technology? Um, Siyempre, as a manager, ikaw din yung magmamanage ng technology ninyo. Ano ba yung mga kailangan ninyo na technology? Kailangan ba ninyo ng ng um, na anong software yung kailangan ninyo anong application, anong computers anong, di ba lahat ng, 
lahat ng yun nasa iyo or shoulder mo as a manager. And then, of course, what you call the structure. Ano tong structure? Yun, yung sino ang boss, sino ang second boss, sino ang pinakababa. So, that's the structure. Um, kailangan mo rin na yung hierarchy, kailangan din lagyan yun ng DN. Bakit importante ang hierarchy when it comes to management? Kasi po, uh, to avoid uh, yung tinasabi nilang bypassing of authority. Yun yung kaimportante, ganun kaimportante yung uh, yung structure or yung yung hierarchy sa isang organization. Dapat alam lahat ng empleyado kung sino ang nasa taas nila, kung saan sila lulugar dun sa structure or dun sa hierarchy ng organization. Dapat alam nila lahat yun. Para nang sa ganun, walang ma-bypass na authority. For example, uh, yung sinasabi natin kanina na kapag, ka, kapag ka may request ka, pupunta ka ba agad sa manager? That's bypassing. Binabypass mo na yung mga, yung mga um, apps mo. Pupunta ka na kasi agad kay manager. Eh, di linab samon, yung mga dapat na, na kumbaga... Sila yung, sila yung direct concern kumbaga dun sa iyong request. So, for, for example nga nung kanina, yung request mo na mag-leave, syempre dun kay um, clerk ka muna, kay, kay uh, sino na pala yun? Yung um, head clerk ka muna magsabi. So, si head clerk na yung magsasabi kay, kung in-approve ni si head clerk, siya na yung magsasabi dun sa susunod na ano, yung ganun yung process. So, may process, dapat structured yung process mo And yun din, yung kaimportantehan nga ng paggawa mo ng structured hierarchy. Or yung structure ninyo, yung hierarchical structure ninyo in your organization, trabaho mo rin yun as a manager. Next, what are the objectives of administrative office management? So first, we have to ensure that the relevant organizational activities are designed to minimize individual and unit productivity. To maximize, dapat yan. Next, to provide effective management of the organization's information. O, di ba? Sinasabi natin kanina. To provide effective management of organizational information. So, yun yung isang trabaho ng office management. Or administrative office management. Or yung mga managers. So, yun yung isang trabaho nila. So, next, to maintain reasonable quantity and quality of standards. To develop effective working process and procedures. So, ayan, pumapasok ulit dyan yung effective working process and procedures. <coughs> Next, to provide satisfactory physical and mental working environment for the organization's employees. To help the define and define duties and responsibilities of employees assigned within the AOM function area. Next, to develop satisfactory lines of communication among employees within AOM function area and between these employees in other areas within the organization. To help employees maintain a high level of work effectiveness and to enhance the effectiveness of supervision of office personnel to ensure the efficient and proper use of specialized office equipment. Okay, so yun yung Um, mga ano ng AOM. Next, what is the main function of administrative office manager? Parang inuulit-ulit lang naman natin. So, first, an office manager is responsible for monitoring and reviewing systems. When you say systems, these are applications or softwares na ginagamit. Usually focusing on specific outcomes such as improved time scale, turnover, output, sales, etc. They may supervise or manage a team of administrators, allocating roles, recruiting and training, and using issuing assignments and projects. As such, the role is varied, often including responsibilities across a diverse range of functions such as customer service, budget management, report writing, system analysis, process mapping, purchasing, bookkeeping, human resources, recruitment, sales and marketing, records management, form template design, website maintenance, project management, management consultancy, facility management, space management, risk management, payroll, accounting, database management. Okay, so yun lahat yung maaaring trabaho na tinatawag natin na administrative office manager. So, ano ba yung administrative office manager ulit? Sila yung um, gumagawa ng mga administrative tasks. 
And when you say administrative task, it involves keeping of information, managing of information, um, making proposals, making letters. So, syempre, kapag ka, um, you're making letters, ayan. <laughs> and then, uh, kaya, uh, pumapasok dito yung sinasabi nila na customer service. O yan, report writing. Kasi nga, gumagawa ka ng <laughs> letters. Ikaw din yung gumagawa ng report. So, when you say administrative, kasi ito na yung overall na, na, ano, na, kumaga, tumitingin ng overall na, na management ng isang kumpanya. So, it involves bookkeeping as well. Kapag ka, yung company nyo is more on sales. So, it it involves bookkeeping. It involves customer service. And another thing is it involves payroll. Accounting. So, ma malawak yung, yung sakop ng administrative office manager. So, what are the careers in administrative office management? Individuals who started in low-level offices can now be a vice president in an administrative service. Such as opportunities make a career in administrative office management challenging and re rewarding as well. So, what are the responsibilities of uh, administrative office managers? Planning function is all about planning and development, assessing the need for designing and implementing totally new functions and services. So, yung manager ng administrative office, ang siyang nagpla-plan or gumagawa ng plano and development. So, for example, you as a manager, nakita mo na na kailangan ninyo ng sistema when it comes to um, borrowing of borrowing of equipments. So, since nakita mo na may kailangan ninyo ng sistema, anong gagawin mo as a manager? Ikaw yung mag-formulate or magpla-plano kung anong sistema ang dapat ninyong i-implement. So, it involves planning function. Next, organizing function. This is necessary to produce effect effective methods and techniques when implementing changes to maximize organizational and individual productivity. Ano naman itong dinatawag nating organization organizing functions? As a manager, you are um, you must learn how to organize things. <laughs> Hindi naman. Pero when you say organizational or organizing functions kasi, um, may mga necessary kang kailangan yung i-organize. For example, dun sa, dun sa um, pinasukan mong trabaho as a manager, eh, hindi masyadong organize yung sistema nila. Uh, hindi masyadong, let's say, um, ano ba yung example natin? Basta hindi masyadong organize yung yung sistema nila. So, you as a manager, ikaw na yung responsible na mag-ayos. Ayusin mo na, di ba, sabi nga kanina natin, planning function, ikaw yung gagawa ng, ng sistema. Ngayon, kung meron naman na silang sistema, pero hindi nga lang siya organized, medyo magulo, you as a manager, ikaw na yung yung dapat na umayos or mag-ayos nung, nung sistema nila or nung, yeah, nung sistema nila. I-organize mo na para nang sa ganun, ma-maximize mo yung, yung, yan, yung organizational and individual productivity. Next, staffing function. This is about growth and experiences of the employees. So, when you say staffing function, um, karga mo din or responsibility mo rin as a manager or administrative office manager, yung development ng yung employees. Lahat, um, you have to, syempre, i, ano mo din, kailangan mo rin i-upgrade yung mga empleyados mo. So, dun pumapasok yung tinatawag natin na staffing functions. Next, um, directing function. This is all about employees to assure that they comply with the policies of their of their performance meets the expectations of the employees. Ano daw? Pero when you say directing functions, um, isa sa pinakamabigat na responsibility ng, ng, ng manager is kung paano ka magbibigay ng um, direct or direction. Hindi naman siya direction. Kung paano ka, kung baga kas ano ka ngayon agibaon or kas ano nga Ano mo, how will you make your employees follow your rules? Diba? Ganon yun. Directing function. Paano, how can you make them follow your rules? How will you make them comply with what you want them to do? Yung mga ganon. So, yun yung mahirap. Ang hirap na, especially kapag kabagong salta ka pa lang, 
and yung mga empleyados na na under sa yo eh medyo mas matagal na sila ang and and especially kapag ka mas bata ka and mas may edad yung mga nasa baba mo it's very hard to give instructions to tell them what to do to make them follow your rules or to make them follow your new system yung sistema mo na gusto mong i-implement it's very hard so that's one of the functions ng manager the directing function and lastly the controlling function this is all about the quality and quantity of the work this is where we take corrective actions whenever necessary this is also this also motivates employees to be cost conscious so when you say controlling function are you able to to implement your your rules and regulations properly and tawag dyan, corrective actions. When someone disobeyed, when someone um, did not follow the rules, are they um, given the uh, corrective actions na kinakailangan? Mm. Diba? So, ayan, dapat nasa iyo rin yan. Isang function din yan ng manager. The, uh, so, let's repeat. We have um, the functions or the responsibilities of an administrative office manager. We have the planning function, organization, organizing functions, staffing functions, directing functions, and controlling functions. Now, next, syempre, ano na natin yung mga responsibilidad ng isang manager? Ano naman ngayon ang qualifications ng isang manager? A thorough understanding of various business management fundamentals. So, ito yung rason kung bakit yung low-level employee ng isang company ay eh, tumataas ng rangko hanggang sa maging vice president or hanggang sa maging manager na siya nung, nung, nung kinabibilangan niyang, ano, na, niyang office. Kasi nga, you have to be able to understand yung fundamental na or management fundamentals ng isang company. Siyempre, kapag ka nagsimula ka sa baba, master mo na kung ano yung mga procedures sa baba and then you go higher. I-master mo ulit yan. Kapag ka na-master mo ulit yan, pupunta ka ulit sa mas mataas na position. So, you see, nagkakaroon ng development sa'yo. And because nagkakaroon ka ng development, nagkakaroon ka ng mas understanding or mas, mas malawak na understanding dun sa scope ng trabaho. So, that's one of the qualifications ng pagiging manager. Dapat alam mo kung ano yung mga pasikot-sikot, ano yung mga trabaho, ano yung mga kailangan gawin, ano yung mga possible na solutions dun sa mga bagay-bagay na pwedeng mangyari dun sa loob ng organization. So, ayan, isa yun sa qualification. Next, leadership. Siyempre, kailangan din ng leadership when it comes to manager. Kasi hindi pwedeng, um, hindi pwedeng, may mga, may mga tao kasi na yung hindi, hindi nila kayang i-exert or hindi nila kayang pasunodin yung ibang tao. So, hindi ka pwedeng maging manager kung wala kang leadership. And paano ka magkaroon ng leadership? Siyempre, to become a good leader, you have to be a good follower. Paano ka magiging good follower? You have to have a thorough understanding of the various business management fundamentals. Nakita ninyo? So, umiikot lang yan. Umiikot lang yan. So, next, educational requirements. Siyempre, kailangan mo din ng mga, when you when you enter into a managerial position, siyempre, kailangan mo din ng tinatawag natin na educational requirements. Dapat business-related din yung course mo. Or dapat operational-related uh, din yung course mo. Or related dun sa managerial position na ina-applyan mo yung course mo. Next, train such as integrity. Traits such as integrity, intelligent, energy, and then, and able to write the formal reports and fine on finances and planning. Siyempre kasi trabaho mo yan eh. Next, assertively. Flexibility. Assertiveness dapat yan. And then, flexibility, accuracy, and then the ability to cope with pressure. Kasi when it comes to being a manager, there are instances kung saan kung ano-ano na lang na problema ang sumusulpot. So, you have to be able to work under pressure. And aside from that, yun yung, ano, yung assertive. Assertive, yung kaya mong um, pilitin ang mga empleyado mo na gawin ang isang bagay na hindi nila gustong gawin. But since you are the manager, um, kumbaga, kinakailangan nilang gawin yun. Kasi yun yung mandato mo. Yun yung sinabi mo. That's being assertive. Pinipilit mong gawin ng isang tao. Siyempre, yung, yung bagay naman na sa tingin mo, sa, na, na tingin mo eh, makakabuti rin naman sa company sila lang talaga yung may ayaw na gawin yun. Pero since ikaw ang manager, yung, yung assertive na, na qualification dapat nasa'yo. Para nang sa ganun, kahit na ayaw nilang gawin, 
mapipilit mo silang gawin yun. Kasi nga, it's for the betterment of the company or of the organization. Next, what are the challenges affecting, affecting the administrative office manager, manager? Coping with governmental regulations, mm, government-related issues. Next, coping with new technology, especially ito dun sa mga medyo matanda na, nahihirapan sila na mag-cope sa technology. Next, enhancing organizational productivity, accommodating diversity, Serving as change agent, accommodating globalization, dealing with office systems that fail to perform as expected. So, yun yung mga challenges. Yun yung mga challenges na maaaring kaharapin ng, ng isang administrative office manager. So, especially to the letter H, when you say dealing with office systems that fail to perform as expected, paano mo ididil or paano yung magiging... Um, reaction mo kung meron kang sistema na gustong i-implement and it failed. First, syempre, i-assess mo bakit siya nag-fail. What happened? What went wrong? And then, kung babaguhin mo ba kung ano yung naging pagkakamali during that um, implementation of this office system, magiging successful na ba? So, dealing with it is really hard, especially kapag ka ag very against yung mga empleyado dun sa, sa system na gusto mong ipa-implement. And then, biglang, biglang hindi siya nag-click, hindi siya nag, or naging failure yung system na yun. Siya magiging, yan kasi yung sinasabi namin. So, hindi naman kasi ganito, ganito, ganito. Nakakababa yun ng moral. So, as an administrative office manager, how will you deal with it? So, it's very challenging ang pagiging administrative office manager. Next, administrative assistant. So, meron tayong administrative manager. Next career is yung administrative assistant. May be responsible for compiling or even composing some parts of a formal letter. The smaller the company, the more likely an administrative assistant may be asked to do such task. An administrative assistant is likely to serve as a greeter and introduce speakers at formal functions. So, assistant lang talaga. Um, Kung baga, kaagapay lamang siya dun sa nung, nung, nung manager. So, lahat pa rin talaga ng, ng decision making is uh, lahat ng decision making falls uh, on the administrative office manager's shoulder. So, yung assistant, ano lang? Assistant lang. <laughs> Tumutulong lang. Katulungan lang ni administrative officer. Okay, so I think that ends our mahabahabang discussion ng ating first week. Um, be prepared for more <laughs> joke. I hope that you were able to understand anything. Ano ang office procedures? Ano ang administrative office management? Ano ang of administrative office manager? And ano ang administrative assistant? Okay? So, at least man lang yun yung mga nakuha ninyo or na, yeah, na, na, na pag-aralan natin. Yun man lang yung nag-stay dun sa brains ninyo. You know? Anyway, kung may mga questions kayo, please, as I've said a while ago, feel free to message me via messenger and I will answer as soon as I can. Or kung talagang kailangan ninyo ng one-on-one -on -one na discussion, pwede naman kayong pumunta ng school but make sure to message me ahead nang sa ganon, I will be available at the time na pupunta tayo ng school. And another thing is, um, please, uh, kung magagawin na ninyo yung inyong activity, kasi there's already a deadline for activities, it should be submitted next, next week's Friday. Friday after next week, or in the third week. Diba? First week ngayon, so second week, and then no, the third week, dapat mag-submit na kayo ng 1 and 2 na requirement. So, simulan na ninyo. And speaking of requirement, ano nga ba yung magiging requirement ninyo for this week? So, here we have, ang sabi, um, essay, explain in detail the following. For 50 points, 25 each, what does the phrase increase productivity while decreasing costs mean as a new trend for today's business operation? Ano yung ibig sabihin ng increase productivity while decreasing costs? Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Number two, what does shrinking staffs means as discussed to be the result of increasing productivity while decreasing costs? Ano naman ang ibig sabihin ng shrinking staff? When it comes to, ayan, yung increasing productivity while decreasing cost. Okay? So, activity number two, 
I'm sorry, that's activity number two. Our direction, give differences of AOM or Administrative Office Management today from past um, Administrative Office Management as to, number one, work and workplace environment, ano yung difference? Number two, values in the workplace. Number three, skills and responsibilities of staff compared ngayon and noon. Next, technology use. So, compared noon at ngayon. Ano yung mga differences? So, kahit na magbigay kayo ng 5 each number. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you were able, inuulit ko, I hope you were able to understand our discussion. Um, and I hope to see you in our next video as well. Kung may question kayo with regards to your activity, please, ayan, inuulit ko. Feel free to message me via messenger or come to school. Um, just message me ahead of time. Uh, ayan, good day and God bless. Goodbye everyone.